Well, it is a wonderful moment, there's no doubt at all. I mean, this is uh, the first saint since the, if you like, the, the, the whole of the Reformation saints uh, to be declared by the church. Uh, but now someone coming from the pastoral academic work of the church, not, not a martyr in, in that sense of having shed his blood, uh, but someone who teaches us the importance and the richness of the life of faith and interprets it in such a sensitive way into our English context. As far as I know, when he was first ordained as a priest in the Church of England, his first curacy was characterized by a very, very systematic visiting of people in their homes. And I think it's recorded that he didn't just visit the Catholics, he visited everybody. And so, at the beginning of his life of ministry, there was this emphasis on sharing, contacting people in their ordinary everyday lives. And I think in all the years in which he ministered in Birmingham, that remained a crucial part of his understanding of priesthood. And there were very profound reasons for it, very profound reasons. He firmly believed that the signs of God's work in our lives are to be seen in our everyday experience both for good and for, for difficulty. So to be close to people was his way, I think, of helping them to read how God was at work in their lives. Uh, and that he then refined into reflection of enormous detail and depth about his own experiences and his own movement of spirit and the influence of the Holy Spirit. But he saw that, I think, as at the heart of his pastoral ministry. So we wanted always to encourage people to be attentive to what was going on in their lives, not in a self-regarding way, but in a way which was looking for the presence of God and the call to holiness. That was the topic of his first sermon as a young Anglican priest, the call to holiness. And I think that was a kind of light motif that went right through his whole life. Cardinal Newman, saw the full communion of the Catholic Church in his insistent uh, search for truth and where it would be found. Uh, and he did that on the basis of enormous study. So in many ways it was the impulse of history that gave uh, the force to his quest and to his decision. And as we know, it was a very, very costly decision. It cost him in terms, it had already cost him in terms of uh, prestige within the University of Oxford. It cost him greatly in terms of his circle of friends. Uh, but he came, he, he made that journey out of an absolute inner conviction uh, that the fullness of the intention of Christ was to be found in communion with the Bishop of Rome and within the visible Catholic Church. Now, we've journeyed a long way together, uh, the Anglican Communion and the Catholic Communion, and much of that has been helped by shared historical study. Uh, and it's very important that that study continues and that we continue to address uh, the areas of difference that still exist between us at a doctrinal level in particular. But what we also see in Cardinal Newman is a man who was dedicated to uh, the presenting, the announcing, the explaining of the Christian faith to a British society. And in a way, that probably roots back into his younger days, his evangelical days. So you have this combination in Cardinal Newman of the Evangelical, the Anglican and the, and the Catholic. Uh, and maybe it's that Evangelical spirit uh, that, that kind of tells us where we are now. Because what our churches strive to share more and more is the task of presenting the call of Christ, the beauty of Christ, the compassion of Christ, the generosity of those who want to follow Christ in 
our community. And Newman did that through his actions and he did that especially through his later writings. Uh, but Newman teaches us today uh, to understand the nature of faith, the grammar of the ascent of faith. And he helps us to, to understand that it's not simply the conclusion of logical argument. It's not, as one image has it, it's not an iron bar of certainty. Uh, the, the life of faith and the choice of faith is much more like a cable, a steel cable, that is made up of very, very many different strands woven together. And then together they give this great strength of the certainty of faith. And some of those strands are experiential, some of them are emotional, some of them are the fruit of study, some of them are indeed the force of logic. But no one of those stands on its own. Uh, and I think he helps us today to, to grasp the wholeness of faith and to see ultimately that it is deeply personal or in one of his favorite phrases, it is a matter of the heart. I think he's also uh, a patron for theologians as well. Uh, and I mean this because he was you know, the most academic of men. Uh, but he knew that academic work was not enough. He, he delved like no other into the history of the church, into the teaching of the fathers, to try and understand its rootedness. But he did that so that he could spring forward into the life of faith. And so I think he's a reminder to every theologian that they are to be much more than a professional theologian. A theology is a service for the life of faith. And I hope the theologians today will be inspired by this great theologian to see that their work is never just for the lecture hall, is never just for academia, but it is uh, to give fresh impetus and fresh insight and fresh appeal to the truths of faith. And again, you know, Cardinal Newman said, nobody will become a Catholic, nobody will be converted to Christ through argument. We have to touch their hearts. So I think this uh, new saint, Saint John Henry Newman, can be a great inspiration for every priest working in the parishes of England and Wales. He's a man who did what we do. He visited his people. He wanted to urge them, he taught them how to pray, he provided them with the sacraments, he called them to holiness. He did his best to keep going when there were great difficulties against him. He had immense periods of sense of failure and all of these things every priest experiences. But here is someone whom the church now holds up for our inspiration as a priest, as a pastoral father. Uh, to the people of this country. I was also very, very struck by the fact that at his funeral, the day of his funeral, the cortege went, co a coffin and horses, the six, seven miles from the oratory south to Rednall, where he was buried in the Oratorian summer house in the graveyard there. And those miles of road were lined by the people of Birmingham. And I think contemporary comments say that they'd come to salute somebody whom they knew as their father, as their father in God. And, and I think that tells uh, a great story about a crucial aspect of the life of Cardinal Newman.